Good morning. Happy Thursday to you. Almost finished with this week, and we come to Genesis 6. We've been going through Genesis in these daily devotional videos, or at least five or four days a week devotion videos. And Genesis 6 is the corruption of mankind. Remember, starting in Genesis 3, Adam and Eve sinned, and, in, and through Genesis 11, we see fallenness. We see curses. We see bad things. Let's read this. Now it came about when men began to multiply in the face of the land, and daughters were born to them, that the sons of God, so that the daughters of men were beautiful, they took wives for themselves, whomever they chose. We look at that, sometimes sons of God is used as a euphemism for angels in the Bible. Sometimes when it says sons of God is talking about angels. So some people think, they read this and they think, sons of God uh, meant that demons married the daughters of men, which would be human, because angels are fallen uh, demons are fallen angels. So they think that demons married human women and um, that corrupted mankind. I, I reject that view. What I think actually is that the sons of God are the godly line of Seth. The godly line of Seth, Adam's children by Seth from the previous chapter. And the daughters of men are the ungodly line of Cain in Genesis 4. So in Genesis 4, we had all the descendants of Cain. Genesis 5, we had all the descendants of Adam and Eve through Seth. So Seth was a godly line and Cain was the ungodly line. And they, they intermarried now. And see why this matters in Genesis 3. Then the Lord said, My spirit shall not strive with man forever, because he also is flesh. Nevertheless, his day shall be 120 years. Now, 120 years. Now, if you read this, Abraham lived to be 175, and others lived older. But it seems like it was to be 120, but it didn't happen immediately. It did not happen immediately. So by the end of the Pentateuch, the Torah, Pentateuch and Torah are the first five books of the Bible. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. By the end of Deuteronomy, we see that uh, Moses died at 120. And so that came about by the end of Moses' life. Verse 4. The Nephilim were on the earth in those days. So again, putting verse 2 and verse 4 together, some think sons of God made the daughters of men create this race of Nephilim. And that's because they think Nephilim means giants. Nephilim really doesn't mean giants. Nephilim just means fallen ones. It just means fallen ones, okay? So the daughters of, the daughters of men... The ungodly line of Cain married the, son, the sons of God, which would be the godly line of Seth. And that, in, that intermingling, that un, unequally yokedness, so to speak, created fallen ones. The Nephilim were on the earth in those days, the fallen ones. And also afterward, when the sons of God came into the daughters of men and they bore children to them. Ungodly line married the godly line, created um, more ungodliness. Those were the mighty one. Mighty men who were of old men of renown. Verse 5. Then the Lord saw that the wickedness of man was great on the earth, and that every intent of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. The Lord was sorry that he had made man on the earth, and he was grieved in his heart. Now that's just using anthropomorphic language, ascribing to God human attributes. Verse 7. The Lord said, I will blot out man whom I have created from the face of the land, from man to animals to creeping things and to birds of the sky, for I'm sorry that I made them. But Noah found favor in the eyes of the Lord. These were the records of the generations of Noah. Noah was a righteous man, blameless in his sight. Noah walked with God. Noah was righteous and blameless. It didn't mean that he was sinless, that he, but that his patterns of behavior followed God. Noah became the father of three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Now the earth was corrupt in the sight of God, and the earth was filled with violence. God looked on the earth, and behold, it was corrupt, for all flesh had corrupted their way upon the earth. Then God said to Noah, The end of all flesh has come before me, for the earth is filled with violence because of them, and behold, I am about to destroy them with the earth. Make for yourself an ark of gopher wood. An ark of gopher wood. You shall make the ark with rooms, and shall cover it inside and out with pitch. This is how you shall make it. The length of the ark... 300 cubits, its breadth 50 cubits, its height 30 cubits. You shall make a window for the ark and finish it to a cubit from the top and set the door of the ark in the side of it. You shall make it with lower, second, and third decks. Behold, I, even I, am bringing the flood of water upon the earth to destroy all flesh, in which is the breath of life from under heaven. Everything that is on the earth shall perish. But I will establish my covenant with you, and you shall enter the ark, you and your sons and your wife and your sons' wives with you. And, every, and, and of every living thing of all flesh, you shall bring two of every kind into the ark to keep them alive with you. They shall be male and female. Of the birds after their kind, of the animals after their kind, and of every creeping thing of the ground after its kind, two of every kind will come to you to keep them alive. As for you, take for yourself some of all food which is edible, and gather it to yourself, and it shall be food for you. 
and for them. Thus Noah did according to all that God had commanded him, so he did. So this is the introduction to the flood narrative. We'll see the flood begin in the next chapter, and um, we'll come back to this tomorrow. Have a good day in the Lord. God bless.